Lipids are biological molecules which are insoluble in water and that's because they contain a large hydrophobic nonpolar region that does not allow them to actually dissolve in an aqueous environment. Now, although we have many different types of lipids that exist in nature, the lipids that we're going to focus on are the lipids that we'll find in the cell membranes of eukaryotic cells as well as bacterial cells. And there are three lipids that we'll find in cell membranes. So we'll find phospholipids, glycolipids, as well as cholesterol molecules. Now, in this lecture, we're going to focus only on phospholipids. So there are two types of phospholipids. We have phosphoglycerides and we also have sphingolipids. And we'll see exactly what the difference is between these two phospholipids in just a moment. First, let's discuss the constituents, the components that make up any phospholipid. So let's take a look at the following list. Number one, we'll always find a platform molecule, a molecule that acts as the backbone of attachment for the other groups. In the case of the phosphoglycerides, we'll have a glycerol that acts as a backbone. In the case of the sphingolipids, we'll have a slightly different platform molecule known as a sphingosine. Now, they always have fatty acids. In the case of sphingolipids, we have one fatty acid. In the case of phosphoglycerides, we have more than one fatty acid. They always contain a phosphate group, and most of the time, the phosphate group is attached onto some type of modified alcohol, and that's why we have a star. We won't always find this attachment. We'll find it most of the time. Now, both types of phospholipids, these phosphoglycerides and sphingolipids, are amphipathic molecules. And what that means is they have a nonpolar component and they have a polar component. So basically, the fatty acids give the phospholipids the hydrophobic nonpolar properties. But it's these two groups, the phosphate and the alcohol, that give them the water loving hydrophilic polar quantities and so uh, qualities and so that's exactly why we call phospholipids amphipathic because they have groups that can associate with polar and non-polar environments so let's begin with phosphoglycerides and this is basically a diagram that describes what a phospholipid actually looks like so by definition when a phospholipid contains a glycerol as the platform molecule we call such a phospholipid phosphoglyceride so what exactly is a glycerol well basically a glycerol is a three carbon alcohol molecules. So we have one, two, three carbons, and each one of these carbon is attached onto an oxygen that was part of the hydroxyl of that alcohol group. But after we combine these molecules, we remove that H atom, and so we simply have these oxygens as shown in the following uh, diagram. Now, we also have two fatty acids. So fatty acid number one is attached onto carbon number one. Facet, uh, fatty acid number two is attached onto carbon number two. So we see that there's an ester bond that exists between the oxygen of this carbon and the carbon of that carboxylic acid of that fatty acid. And notice, that these two fatty acids don't have to be the same exact length. So they can have the same number of carbon atoms or they can be different and that's why I have N and M. So N can be equal to M or they can be different integers. Now, what about the third carbon? The third carbon contains an oxygen that is basically attached onto that phosphate component. And notice in this particular case, we don't have anything else attached onto our phosphate group. So we don't have this alcohol. And this is exactly why this phosphoglyceride is an example of the simplest type of phosphoglyceride in which that phosphate group is not actually modified with an alcohol. And the name for this phosphoglyceride is 
phosphatidate. So the simplest phosphoglyceride in which that phosphate group is not modified with the alcohol is known as a phosphatidate. And although we'll find these phosphatidates inside our cell membrane, we'll only find them in very, very small quantities. Now, most of the time, this phosphate group is actually modified with some type of alcohol. Usually the alcohol is either a choline, a serine, or, or uh, inositol. And we have other common groups, but these are very common groups. So we have the choline, which contains this alcohol component. We have a serine, which is also an amino acid that contains this alcohol. And we have this cyclohexane derivative in, in, e, uh, in which each one of these carbons contains an alcohol. So this is known as inositol. So let's suppose we want to basically combine a choline with the following molecules. So in that particular case, this is basically what we produce. And this is a much more common type of phospholipid, more specifically phosphoglyceride that we'll find in the cell membrane. So notice here we have a bond that is formed between this phosphate uh, this phosphorus atom of the phosphate group and this oxygen of this choline. So we can basically replace this with a serine in which there will be a bond between this phosphorus atom and this oxygen or we can remove this and basically attach this phosphorus atom to this oxygen here. Either case we basically form a modified version of this molecule here. Now let's move on to our sphingolipid. So what's the difference between a phosphoglyceride and a sphingolipid? Well, in the case of phosphoglycerides, this component was a glycerol, but in the case of sphingolipids, the platform molecule, the backbone, is a much more complex alcohol molecule that basically looks like this. So instead of having this three carbon alcohol, we have this more complex alcohol in which we have a primary alcohol, a secondary alcohol, we have this long unsaturated hydrocarbon component that contains this double bond and we also have this amino group that contains a positive charge. This is the sphingosine that acts as a platform molecule that attaches all these other components. So one example of a sphingolipid that we're going to find around the membranes of nervous cells, so nerve cells, is basically a sphingomyelin molecule. And in this particular case, the nitrogen is attached onto that carboxylic acid of that particular fatty acid. So this bond is basically this bond here. And notice, unlike in this case, where we have two of these fatty acids, we only have one fatty acid in this particular case. Now, this is the oxygen attached onto this phosphate, and in this particular case, it's the primary oxygen, not the secondary oxygen, because we have a primary and a secondary. It's the primary attached onto the phosphorus atom of that phosphate group. And just like in this case, we can have an attachment between the P and the oxygen of that alcohol, we have the same thing here, except this molecule is now found on this region here. So this is all also a choline that we have in this particular case. We call this the sphingomyelin. So we see that we have two types of phospholipids. We have the phosphoglycerides and we have the sphingolipids. And basically what differentiates these two is the type of platform molecule that connects the other components, the fatty acids, the phosphate group, and in most cases, that alcohol component.